Hi there Cornerites, Brian the Blob here and today's episode is going to be an introduction to the mechanics of the wall transferring game that we're going to install into the paintball arena. So first of all let me just remind you of the paintball arena. Here's a nice handy map that we have on the wall and as you can see we're actually on the north side of the arena with, if you remember there's the river running through it and the bridge here and we have the six bunkers you can see they're laid out here um, we're just picking up the the dirt from the foundations of these bunkers that haven't really been built yet um, although having said that I have uh, designed and built this north northeast bunker and I'm going to go and sh take take you to see that now so, we just uh, pop out here, say hi to the cats, hi cats, and we're going to just take the quick route to the bunker. So what we've done is we have created uh, this design where you just have a entryway here, very simple and a ladder down to a small um, basement with a chest in the corner and a picture frame showing a colored wool and that is going to indicate the color of wool that this particular chest accepts. Um, so the idea is there will be colored wool in here not of this color. You grab that wool and you head on out of the bunker and you go find another bunker and when the wall colors match you put the wall into the chest and what's happening underneath you all automatically is that wall is going to be redistributed amongst the bunkers so that's the idea in theory and uh, what I'm going to do now is take you over to my creative world so that you can see the design being built and uh, we'll talk about how that we're going to achieve that. So here we are in the creative world and what I'm showing you here is just a schematic of the connections between the bunkers. Um, there's going to be a, uh, a, a minecart that travels between any two bunkers um, basically transferring the wool from one bunker to the other and back again. Um, so this is uh, just the, the schematic showing the, the different colored walls that will be accepted in each of those chests in the bunkers. So let's go and take a look at this um, life-size replica of the paintball arena but I've done it in the uh, the creative world so if you remember uh, I um, explained that uh, the size of this square is 160 by 160 blocks and uh, the bunkers are ar ar arranged um, in that pattern that you saw. Now I'm going to take you to the south wall and just kind of have a look. So what's going on here is um, I marked out where each of the six bunkers were and um, and then built up uh, the, this, the rail system underneath the center two ones. We've got that completely working now. And um, so over the next couple of videos, I'm going to show you the basic mechanics and how to build uh, one of the stations. Um, but just to show you the system working, we can kind of zoom in here and you'll see that we've got one minecart running between uh, this station here, which is the magenta station, and then this station here. So we'll just watch the cart as it travels in. The first thing that it does is it runs up to the top of the system and it unloads any wall that it might have into the hoppers. That goes back into the chest. Then it takes a quick detour into a loading dock where it picks up any wall that may have been deposited in that chest and then it heads back to the other station where it does exactly the same thing. 
Um, so we can just take a quick look here. Um, here's the ladder down into the the basement and as you can see it will be the same square basement this has a uh, glass cutaway so that you can I can just demonstrate what's really happening here when you put wool into this chest as long as it's blue it will enter into hoppers underneath which will eventually get put into the uh, the dropper and the dropper will automatically spit those pieces of wool out into this water channel and the water channel has underneath it three hoppers one two three and um, we have those hoppers connected up or at least the first two we have those connected up to a couple of circuits here when a hopper is powered it will not accept any items and so you'll see that we have one line, then two lines, and then no lines powered over. It's just a, a clock system that is cycling that pattern. And what that does is as the wool gets spat out of the dropper and into the water, it gives the wool a chance to hop over these. And so I figured out the timing. It's, it's pretty good actually at fairly evenly distributing the wool across the three different um, hopper systems. And so that wool basically sits in the bottom of those hoppers waiting for a minecart to come to the collection point. And uh, what it'll do is, you should see it come down in a second. There it is. It comes in, it sits underneath the hopper long enough to load all of the wool that is in there, and then it takes that wool back to the other station. So that's the uh, the redistribution system, and then we also have the loading system. So when the the cart comes in with a load of wool, it actually takes it up to this unloading system, and so that wool gets dropped into the hopper and it makes its way through the hoppers and back into the chest. So let's start off by looking at the circuit that deals with accepting wool into the chest. This is the standard design of uh, two stacked hoppers and using a comparator to create a feedback loop. So what we have is we have in this lower hopper we have a full stack of the item that we want to accept, in this case blue wool, and then the remaining four slots are filled with a um, not often used item and in this case I'm using sugar and so you'll notice that the hopper is not feeding into the dropper and the reason for this is because a power a signal is being applied to it by this torch above we have a hopper leading into that one and in here we have exactly 22 items 22 stackable items this is the percentage capacity of an item hopper, five slots, that will produce exactly one power level out of a comparator. If we add a 23rd item, this will actually tip over to uh, a second square, um, so that'll be a power level two, and so igniting this will extinguish this torch, which will extinguish this red dust, this uh, redstone which will uh, power allow this torch to power back on which of course will power this line which will extinguish this torch which will mean that this hopper can now um, feed stuff through so it will feed exactly one item into here and remember it's always the left hand slot so it'll feed a blue wall into the dropper and of course now it has space to accept another blue wall which will drop in from here which will lower the count of items in this hopper back down to 22 which will um, tip back to only outputting a single item so if we just demonstrate this we can see the uh, the blue wall disappears and it just gets fed through the system and now we're back into the stable state again and we have exactly five items in the dropper. So that's the uh, the filtering system. 
So the next problem to tackle is now that we have the wall in the dropper, how do we distribute that evenly across three different output lines? And so the solution for that was to use a, uh, a water channel with three hoppers set across the, the eight blocks like this. And um, the idea is that we want the wall to drop into either the first, the second, or the third. So the way to achieve that is to apply power. Um, so you'll see when there is no power applied, if we have items in here, we can just pump a couple through. They will immediately go through that first uh, into that first hopper and uh, because of this comparator here and the signal you can see that this hopper accepted those two items. But if we apply power to that hopper, this actually prevents it from accepting any wall or any item. And so putting a couple of items in you'll see they actually make it over that hopper and down into the next one. And so this, the item, uh, the in this case wall, is dropped into that second hopper. So that's the principle, is what we want to do is have two lines come in to these first two hoppers and to have them um, in a cycle switch on and off so that we, at different times, allow the wall either to make it to the far hopper, the middle one, or the first one. So the next problem to consider is how to get the wall to be picked up from the station here. And for that we have powered rail underneath the distribution hoppers. And uh, when there is something in the hopper, it lights this circuit which depowers this rail. So when the minecart comes in, it's going to sit on this rail and that is going to be held in that state until the hopper has emptied. Once it is emptied, of course, the comparator outputs no signal which drops this line which um, allows the torch which you can't see under here. Um, but there's a redstone torch which is currently out. It will repower which will relight the powered rail here which will kick the minecart off. So I can just demonstrate that. There's uh, some wool in the hopper. And we will just set this one off. Let's make sure it's empty. There we are. And off it goes. You see it's loading. And we're done. So there we are. There's the four wool. So that's that system. The next part of the puzzle is how do we get the wall loaded back into a chest? So here we have our chest with nothing in it. And uh, for this, we need to feed the wall in through a line of hoppers like this. And we have a track where the minecart will come up. It'll sit on this rail and unload any wall that it has. Um, again, very similarly, this um, has a comparator right next to the hopper so that when the hopper has stuff in it, because it's being transferred, it will ignite this circuit. And uh, what will also hap what will happen here is that will um, drop this power line, which will um, shut off the, the powered rail here. And just so that we... Um, the, so just so that the minecart comes in and stays there, we have this detector rail so that as the minecart is approaching, it just puts a pulse through there to drop this down early before we start picking up the fact that uh, stuff is being unloaded. Um, it just helps with the, the whole system there. And so, again, we can just do a quick demonstration. Down here we have a minecart, and we can, say, drop off some pink wool and so send that up and you can see the circuit lights up so it's holding the cart there as it's unloading and that wall is getting sucked in and now you'll see that the hopper is empty it's finished so it lights and it kicks the cart back off 
And back in here, we have the wall that was unloaded. Now, if you remember, we have um, at each station we have three lines coming in and leaving. Uh, of course, this is a simplified diagram, but uh, bear that in mind as I show you this next uh, puzzle that we had to solve. So the next problem that we had to solve was how do we get three separate lines to fill the chest with the wool from the, uh, the, the from the minecarts that were incoming. And uh, the way that I solved this, it's probably not the most compact that we can do, but um, it's good enough given that we've got plenty of real estate, as you can see, um, and as long as resources isn't a problem, um, this works just fine. So the idea here is that these hoppers are all feeding into the chest and it's a long line, but it's staggered so that we have room to put comparators off um, these hoppers and yet still have the rail come off the hoppers also. So you can see how we've done that. Um, and the gap here is so that we have enough room to lay this circuitry down without affecting the um, or being affected by the detector rail that is adjacent to it. So um, yeah we had to do that and then one other interesting thing is that when when these are lit they actually are providing power to the hopper underneath this block and of course when a hopper is powered it doesn't allow anything to traverse through it and so one of the th additions that we found uh, we require was required was if a minecart is in this on this end line here we had to also switch off these two lines um, and if there was a minecart in the center we had to still switch off this one so that w there was no power applied to any of the hoppers that were um, on the path back to the chest and so the way we did that was simply to put repeaters uh, between here. Of course, these work like diodes, so the current will only go in the one direction. Um, but if if this line switches off, which will be indicated by this um, this circuit being on, then that will also power this one and switch that off, and also power this one and switch that off. Um, so that was an additional. Uh, thing that we had to consider um, and then of course you know just providing enough power to make sure that the the rail cart gets up to the top um, and back down again uh, so yeah that was the um, the reloading section where the the wall comes in from three different destinations and gets put back into the chest so finally the, the last piece of the puzzle was really um, how do we do the switching because we only want a single line between any two you know the long distance between the two bunkers and so when the cart comes in the first thing that we wanted to do is to go up to the top and so what we have is this switch point system um, where as you can see the cart will come in and it will go up to the top and it will unload any wool that it has and then it comes back down. Now when it hits this detector rail on the way back down that uh, will power this circuit which will change switch the points and the, um, the points change just as the cart is coming over and that will send the cart off down this track which of course will take it down to the reloading system and then when on its return journey of course it will just hop the track and head back off in the direction from whence it came. So there you are, that's all the circuits explained and uh, in the next video we will actually build out uh, one, of these, one of these bunkers and uh, hopefully connect it up. So for now I'll uh, I'll say adios and see you later.